What's up guys, welcome to Biohacking Explained. My name is Daniel and today I'm gonna to be doing a comprehensive overview on Cogrillantide. You're probably asking yourselves, who is this guy on YouTube talking about peptides and biohacking? And to be honest with you, I've been experimenting with this stuff for several years. I live and breathe it. I don't only read about it, but I've actually been experimenting with my own body. I know what works, what doesn't work. I've made mistakes and I just wanna transfer the knowledge that I'm making to you guys so you don't have to make the same mistakes I've done. So by the end of this video, you're gonna be able to know exactly which pathways cogrillantide uses to be effective at weight loss, which side effects and risks are involved with it, as well as dosages and what you can use to stack it with. Cogrillantide is a very similar peptide to the very popular GLP-1s, but the main difference is that it goes through a totally separate pathway it's actually an amylin analog. Since cogrillantine uses a totally different mechanism than GLP-1s, you can actually stack it together with a GLP, making it more efficacious. Remember guys, I do have a free longevity and looks maxing peptide cheat sheet. Just comment peptide below and I'll send it to you guys. Cogrillantide was created by Novadisc and it's a long lasting amylin analog. Its sole purpose was to help individuals that had metabolic issues as well as overweight individuals. Cogrillantide has a very similar structure to pramlintide. It's also an amylin analog, but it's more stable and the half-life is much longer, deeming the medicine more efficacious. So guys, to give you a quick summary, amylin is a hormone that is secreted with insulin and it comes from your pancreatic beta cells and it's very important for appetite suppression and gastric emptying. Amylin is also key for glucose level control. So what is cogrillantide possibly doing for you? The first thing that cogrillantide is doing is that it's activating the amylin receptor in the brain. Inside the brainstem, we can see this compound bind to the nucleus tractus solitarius and the post rema. This leads to not needing to incessantly feed yourself as well as making you feel more satiated. Another way that it's making you feel longer is that it's slowing down your gastric emptying. If you're one of those individuals that has a very well-balanced diet, then cogrillantide is for you. It definitely will help you lose weight or even maintain, but just keep in mind that if you don't have a clean diet, if you're eating ultra processed foods or you're eating too much of one micronutrient, it might arise some of the problems that you've talked about or heard about like GI issues, gastric emptying problems, maybe some vomiting, some nausea. So just keep this in mind, guys. Cogrillantide also works through another mechanism inside the hypothalamus, helping you have more appetite suppression. But in my experience, it has been more of a mental appetite suppression if you compare it with any type of GLP-1 where it's more of a physical type of appetite suppression. This is why, in my opinion, cogrillantide is king against binge eating and cravings. Because of the small changes that cogrillantide helps you do in your habits, you're going to start losing weight, therefore indirectly helping you with your metabolic rate. Cagri enhances your insulin sensitivity by modulating your insulin secretion, therefore helping you with your metabolic health. What this means is that your glucose spikes are gonna be less prevalent, especially when you're eating highly glycemic foods, therefore you're not gonna feel as lethargic. Let's do a quick recap on the benefits of cogrillantide. You're gonna have less calorie consumption, therefore you're gonna get more weight loss, you're gonna feel more energetic, and it's gonna help you with oxidative stress and inflammation. What possible side effects could you experience with cogrillantide? In my experience, cogrillantide has less prevalency of getting any type of side effects like GLP-1 drugs do have, but you can still experience nausea, vomiting, fatigue, GI issues, just keep this in mind like any other peptide can give you this. Cogrillantide does not cause hypoglycemia, but if you are using it with other diabetic drugs and your diet is not as clean, you will have a higher likelihood of going glycemic. All right, guys, so we've gotten to everybody's favorite part. What are the dosages with cogrillantide? I usually like to start with 250 micrograms per week, so that's 0.25 milligrams per week, and I would do that for my first week. My second week, I would double that to 500 micrograms, so half a milligram, and then I would start upping the dose until I feel comfortable with it. Usually for me, that's between 2 to 2.5 milligrams per week. I think some people could go upwards of 4 to 4.5. That's what they use in the trial, so keep this in mind. Remember, guys, it's always better to start low and start titrating up as needed. Don't always start in the highest dose because then you're going to start losing your appetite for the whole week, and you don't want to do that. What are the benefits of using cogrillantide with other GLP-1? So this question varies, guys. Some people are starting at morbidly obese levels while you might just be overweight. So the main benefit from using cogrillantide with other GLPs is that you don't have to start at a very high dose, therefore minimizing the risk of getting nausea or vomiting or any type of GI issues. Also, you're gonna be able to titrate up for much longer periods of time and your receptor sensitivity can be held at a better level. You see, what happened with GLP drugs is that when you start taking it at higher doses, you are gonna have more appetite suppression, 
but the quality of the appetite suppression that you'll be getting is going to be due to the nausea that you feel. It's not going to be like, oh, I don't want to feel like eating anymore. That's not what you're feeling. You're feeling more nauseated. While if you mix it with cagrillantide, it's going to be a more clean appetite suppression. You just feel like you don't want to eat more. You feel more satiated. So this is the main benefit of mixing both together. This is why I think cagrillantide is a great peptide to use and to stack it with GLP-1s because you're not using a metabolic inducer like MOD-C or 5-amino-1-MQ. If you are one of these individuals that is starting at a morbidly obese level and is trying to lose as much weight as possible at whatever cost, then using metabolic inducers like MOTC or 5-amino-1-MQ is a great peptide stack to use synergistically with GLP-1s and cagrillantide. You can also start using GH secretagogues, but the main concern with this is that if you have insulin sensitivity issues, GH is not the best thing for you to do, as well as if you don't have a clean diet. All right, guys, so we have come to the end of this video. Don't forget to get your free longevity and looks maxing peptide cheat sheet. Just comment peptide below. If you've enjoyed and gotten some value out of this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.